Hello, I'm going to tag this sermon, Love is God, We Need to Live and Act in Love. I am an early childhood educator. I am committed to ensuring that our babies grow up in an environment of love. All of the academic language and talk about school readiness melts away when we recognize that at the core, children need to be loved. They need to be seen for who they are. They need to be appreciated and fussed over. They need adults who find joy in their simple existence. This sermon grew out of Cory Booker, Senator of New Jersey's statement that I will not let you steal my joy. This statement came in response to the confirmation hearings of Katanji Brown Jackson. In Justice Brown's statements at confirmation, she said, in my family, it took just one generation to go from segregation to the Supreme Court. She spoke of her family and acknowledged that no one does this alone. She stated, I do so now while bringing the gifts of my ancestors. I am the dream and the hope of the slave, quoting Maya Angelou. In my work, we talk about how children need to see themselves in their environment. They need to see themselves in the curriculum, materials, and experiences that are part of their education. We talk about this as mirrors. We also need to provide a window to the world and windows to one another. For each child, that which mirrors themselves is a window to their peer. Why do I mention my work in early childhood? How does this connect to the confirmation of Justice Brown? And how does it connect to faith? It is all about relationships and it is all about love. We are who we are through our relationship with God and with one another. In our time together today, we will focus on two passages from the Bible. These will be our anchors. However, as I do with my early childhood educators, I'm going to move back and forth and bring in multiple references. I ask for your patience as I move through an argument that I know to be central to the core of who I am and that I believe is core to whom we are as Christians following the guidance of the Bible and seeking to be like Christ. While I have not yet shared the verses that I will be focusing on today, I'm going to take us to summarize James chapter two. God has chosen the poor of this world who are rich in faith. Salvation is gained by keeping the whole law and faith without works is dead. I wanna focus on two points, that God has chosen the poor of this world who are rich in faith. We also see this in the Beatitudes and that faith without works is dead. I know that this last bit, I'm a bit biased as this is the verse that my mother had put on her plaque where her ashes lay. My relationship with my mother is complex and challenging, but what I know that I learned from her goes back to this verse. What we do matters just as much, if not more than what we say. This connects to in infant mental health psychologist, Jerry Paul's statement that how we are is more important than what we do. Okay, so how we are is more important than what we do, and what we do matters more than what we say. How does that connect? People say all kinds of things. What does it mean to be a Christian and to love God with all our heart? What does it look like to love our neighbor as ourselves? What does it mean, and how do we follow the commandment to love mercy, seek justice, and walk humbly with our God? I argue that what we do and how we are in our interactions with everyone is how we live out the teachings of Christ. In our time together today, we will focus on Mark 12, 30 to 31. And you must love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your soul, all your mind, and all your strength. The second is this, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. There is no commandment greater than these. Let's take a minute to sit in these words. What does it mean to love God with all your heart, to love God with all your soul, to love God with all your mind, all your strength? What does it mean to center your life around God? Doesn't this connect us back to James and the idea that our faith is what we do, what we say, how we think, how we live our lives? Is it not about just what we do on Sunday morning? It is about grounding ourselves, our sense of self, our mirrors and windows in the image of God. We are also grounding our time in the commandment Micah 6, 8. He has shown you, O mortal, what is good and what does the Lord require of you to act justly and to love mercy and to walk humbly with your God. I have come back to faith as an adult and a recognition that the Bible and in particular the Gospels provide language that focuses our attention on the least of us. This also is seen in Matthew 25. 
If we are to strive as a society, we need to focus on those who are struggling, those who are in need. And if we are honest with ourselves, we are all struggling, we are all in need. We are all oppressed in different ways. We are all seeking liberation and connection with Christ. And yet our world, our immediate culture is saturated in an idea of exceptionalism, seeing these yet to be United States of America as a beacon on a hill, seeing those who struggle as failures and lazy individuals who are just not trying hard enough. As I listened to Cory Booker speak to Justice Ketanji Brown Jackson, he spoke of those who had walked before us. He stated, I see your ancestors in mine. To love God with all of whom we are and to love our neighbors as ourselves is to see God in one another, to see our ancestors who are living with God in one another, to recognize our interconnectedness. I'm continually drawn to the African concept of Ubuntu. I am because you are. We are all connected and we are all made in the image and likeness of God, focusing on the divine that connects us, supports us in meeting the commandment of Mark 12, 30 to 31. I found hope and connection in the lyrics of Nas and other hip hop artists. I found, I focused on the lyrics of I can in a training with early childhood educators. I know I can be what I want to be. If I work hard at it, I'll be where I want to be. These are the promises of our American exceptionalism culture. But then there is the line, before we came to this country, we were all kings and queens. When we love God with all our being, when we recognize that we are created in the image and likeness of God, we are all kings and queens. Senator Booker spoke about Justice Brown Jackson's icon, Constance Baker Motley. He spoke of his icon, Harriet Tubman. My icon, model, mentor image of who I seek to be is Fred Rogers. Mr. Rogers was an ordained minister who pastored children through this country through the television show, Mr. Rogers Neighborhood. He taught the lessons of loving one neighbors in each message. He stated that he felt the Holy Spirit was between him and the children watching him on television. Fred Rogers spoke of his commitment to fearless authenticity. When we are fully authentic, fully ourselves, fully committed to loving God and loving each other, we can live in heaven on earth. This leads us to the next passage, the commandment from Micah to act justly, to love mercy, to walk humbly. In this single sentence, the prophet sums up the legal, ethical, and spiritual requirements of religion. What does justice mean? Justice, the Hebrew mispat, is mentioned 425 times in the Hebrew Bible. It is found in 31 of the 39 books. Biblical scholars believe that justice partnered with righteousness is a reference to social justice. Social justice is a focus on kindness and faithfulness. Some interpret loving mercy as loving kindness. At the end of the day, I believe that how we are with those who are marginalized and oppressed is how we are with God. Scripture always brings us back to love. When we love God with our whole self, we seek to follow God's commandments and to see Christ in one another. We seek to lift one another up and fight for those who are marginalized and oppressed, to live our lives in loving kindness and with a commitment to justice, to interact with a humility that is grounded in a love of self as a living embodiment of God, with a humility that is grounded in a deep love and caring for one another, and with a recognition that it is always about what we do, what we say, and how we are. As I think about how I follow these commandments, the work I do in education is to hold the hands of the people who are holding the babies. I also look to thinking about how I can support families in the NICU as they are welcoming babies into the world and to sit with those who are leaving this world. I still struggle with the fact that my mother was by herself in the hospital when she passed. What are you going to do? What is your commitment? How do you show your love for God? How do you recognize the divine in each other? How do you live your faith throughout the week? This is what you are being asked to do, to live your faith through your interactions and how you are throughout the week.